Hey, what's up guys? Here with the Recovering Elitist. And just for an FYI, we're talking everything from My Hero to the latest chapter of 331. So if you haven't read the latest chapter, then I would advise to leave. So, uh, what's up? Yo, yo, how's it going? Thanks for having me, my man. Yeah, no problem. I mean, we were meant to do this last weekend, but my computer screwed up. But hey, better late than never. We got to do, I guess, talk about another chapter with the latest with 331. So what did you think? Um, I think it actually worked out that we ended up waiting because the follow-up chapter was pretty damn good, in my opinion. Yeah, I mean, I mean there was a lot of text, the chapter as a whole. Yeah, go ahead. Oh, ex extreme amount of check, uh, text. It seems kind of more or less <laughs> that he was just kind of giving one big middle finger to all of us, saying, if you want to understand the quirk, good luck. There's a million different applications to it, so <laughs> yeah. take it how you want. Yeah, I imagine her training, it was, it was crazy, because you think, like, how they do quirk training, hers would probably have to do with creativity as opposed to, like, you know, physical training or something like that. It's crazy just to think about what she can do. Yeah, and just the fact that he even kind of states out the author, like, uh, how is this even a quirk? Yeah. Like, yeah, I don't, I don't even know how it was. It reminds me a little of Death Note when she's, like, writing the name, and the next time you move, you can just, like, basically just die. Just so many applications to it. And it almost kind of reminds me a little of Momo's in a way, how she needs to know the structural components of, like, a, right. an item to make it out of her. Some so it reminds me a little of Momo. Yeah, I'm with you on that. I mean, I was joking last week on Twitter saying that uh, it's pretty hilarious how the American superhero Stars and Stripes quirk is essentially the ability to create executive orders. Basic, basically just the plot armor quirk. Exactly. Just pull anything out your ass whenever you want. Yeah, subtlety it, with quirk yeah, this, is not a thing. <laughs> like, this This might have been the most over-powered like powered fight I've seen in my life. Someone kind of stated how in this news chapter she's basically just using the susano yeah that was ridiculous oh man and uh, almost with the light with how the jets shot the laser is almost like kind of kieran with like sasuke it's just <laughs> it's insane what she can do yeah the scale up has been intense i mean even from the beginning of 330 with um with shigaraki's basic basically an emp blast yeah, that was ridiculous. He could e so I'm I'm imagining he could easily knock out stealth bombers. Which, yeah, when you think about that, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And uh, one thing I saw someone else saying they really think that they're gonna steal Star and Stripe, uh, Star and Stripe's quirk, and I just can't I can't see that because he's already this powerful. Like, what can any hero do once he steals this quirk? Yeah, I imagine it would be pretty. I I can't I can't see Horikoshi being able to paint himself out of the corner if he gives Shigaraki her quirk. I see her, I I see it more likely her dying or being taken out the game in some way, but I can't imagine him being that broken. Yeah, like since she's part of kind of like a military, I can imagine before if she was to get her quirk steal, stolen, she'd know a way of how kind of just to I guess kind of off herself so there's no way he can steal her quirk. Word. Yeah, I, I definitely can see that as well. Um, because Yeah, go ahead. I, because it's almost kind of like when the Paranormal uh, Liberation War happened, they had to kill off Twice. Because there's no way that the Giant, Shiggy, all the high end Nomu, and Twice can all be at the battle at the same time. Yeah. So due to plot, Twice had to die. And even Hawks knew, as much as Shig Shigaraki's scary, Twice is very sneaky strong. Mm-hmm. Easily turns the tide of a battle overnight. Yeah, so if, if if he was able to kill twice like that, I just, for the sake of plot, I just don't see how he can write where Shigaraki gets this quirk as well. Yeah, and then we also, uh, apparently they're in Japan's airspace, if I'm correct, so I, I would hope that there's a backup coming soon, because <laughs> this is not, even towards the end of the, even towards the end of 331, that it, it's not looking good. Yeah, I mean, my God, if if no one knows where they're at at the moment, they should have with this last chapter with all the explosions going on. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, I mean, uh, it's, <laughs> I wonder, I just wonder how much longer we have, though. What do you think? We got a few months, maybe a year, like 10 chapters. How much longer do you think we have? I think I'm genuinely, one of the reasons why I like Horikoshi so much as an author is because 
especially towards the war arc, I stopped being able to predict anything. I couldn't tell where he was going with anything. Everything that I was thinking of was just like, he just went completely different direction. So I'm, I'm honestly at the point where I can't tell how much more we have left. Yeah, I mean, I feel like everyone's been trying to predict for the longest when All Might's going to die. Everyone, A lot of people believe he's going to, like, when's he going to die? There's so many other just things going on at the moment, right? Exactly. Um, I, uh, what's his name? Gentle still has to come back. Um, there's, yeah. there's, there's so, there are so many, there are so many open plot holes that still have to be filled. It's like I don't know what's gonna happen. How he's gonna fin- fig- figure this out in one arc? But good luck to you, my man. Yeah, and it, it sucked though that when Deku was fighting Lady Nagant and Overhaul was there. Overhaul was literally, what was his purpose of being brought back? I think he will have further significance with Eri because she's still in the game and the boss is still in the game. So that whole family is still. Yeah, it only intact, seemed right? right. It only seemed right, but I, I thought it would have already happened. Yeah, there's a lot of picking up and putting down in terms of plot points. And um, that's kind of what's leading to my whiplash, too, because things are starting and not concluding. Yeah, I mean, there's so many things, like I said, because we always still need to see what's going on with the Todorokis. Everyone, I mean, I didn't care much for this, but with if they're going to talk about the school trader again, and then also the second user of All for One, or One for All, because we still haven't, we've seen every other one but him yet, and some obviously think that he's like Bakugo from the past, so it's a lot, a lot of things still need to be aired out. I think that's actually leading to my anticipation for the end of the series, just seeing how he is going to pull this off. I, that's part of the reason why I'm still reading, just be like, wow, this is a lot to do. <laughs> Good luck, sir. I feel like it's <laughs> reminding me of uh, last minute exams at school. Like, I don't know how I'm going to get this done. <laughs> yeah, there's yeah, more, like I said, uh, so, there's a big theory I also read on, too, that Deku originally had decay and he got his quirk stolen. From Garaki and given to Shigaraki, and all for one was the person who brought him to the home. I did actually so, see yeah, that they're, they're theory. Yeah, I saw that. I, I remember looking at that, and I was it, it narratively it makes perfect sense. I would really like to see something like that happen, just to see how Deku as a character would rebound from that. Since like his whole thing lately has been mental trauma and um, getting through that aspect of things, so I imagine that would put a huge burden on him. Yeah, for sure. I mean, it seems obvious he's kind of going back a little to normal, right, direction after bringing, bo- uh, bringing back to UA and obviously Ochako <laughs> being the bro she is helping him. Exactly. I, that's actually been an issue in the community lately that I've been noticing. A lot of people don't like that he hasn't been, his trauma hasn't been addressed in a satisfying enough manner for a lot of the fans. And I kind of see where they're coming from, to be honest. It's it's kind of yeah, all glossed no, over. I agree. I agree. But I mean, I guess with everything just going on, it's so hard. It it really seems like, in a way, Harukoshi really just wants to wrap this up, and you know, there's just so much that needs to be brought out. Yeah, I think um another YouTuber mentioned how many uh, breaks he's taken recently, and how many like reductions to, um, his typical workflow has taken place in the past couple months just indicating that like yeah he probably needs a really long break right now yeah i mean he's pumping out like what one every like thursday i mean my goodness look at one with one punch man uh there's, there's like what one chapter every three months now and it's only like two pages absolutely and it, there's a lot to even say to the quality of his writing too like he had everybody on the edge of their seat for over a year in weekly installments that's not easy Oh, yeah, without a doubt. And we talked about this a little earlier before we started recording this, that we didn't care much for the the movies because they really weren't canon. They're just they were just literally just extra money. All right, let's see what we can do. Just throw a bunch of our money in the pile for, our you know, cool animations. But then what do you know with the the first movie, I believe it was that that girl that all might save in America ends up being Star and Stripe. Right. Yeah, that's crazy. I, I like how they, it's annoying how they did that because a lot of other issues with the movie then pop up, but I like yeah. how it was tied in. Now I'm like, all right, 
so what the hell's going on here? Is the, is the whole movie canon now? Exactly. It's just a quick snippet canon, right? Because it's like two movies go, thing like Hero Rise or whatever. They show a silhouette saying, I have villains from other countries and whatnot, and they show a silhouette of one of the villains from a movie. So I'm like, oh, goodness grief. What's going on here? Is this canon? Well, one way to think about Because ab- obviously... Yeah, go ahead. Oh, sorry. Uh, no, I was just saying. One way to think about it is that um, that actu- that segment of the movie takes place in the past, where All Might had a little bit of like a work study overseas, which is canon. So the whole movie doesn't necessarily. Well, then again, there he does bring in what's his face, uh, the 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 girl's daughter, Shields. Yeah. Or the guy's uh, the the daughter, the woman's father. Jeez, I can't speak well today. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I think his name is Dave, David Shields. So I guess the yeah, I guess the whole yeah. thing is canon. Ah, uh, just every movie. Then well, let me guess: is it canon that you know Deku could just pass one for all to Bakugo and then get uh, one for all back? And is Nine actually a real person? You know, biggest ass pull of the uh, series. No, I... I'll give him that. <laughs> Yeah, I don't really, like, I, the only one I watched was that one where Deku gave one for all to Bakugo, and even still, I was, I don't know. It's, yeah, the I movies, to me, it's whatever. But, hey, I guess also, apparently, My Hero what, v- Vigilantes is a thing, and then they made one thing be canon with, uh, what's it, Azawa's uh, buddy, the cloud guy who ends up being Kirigiri. Right. I, I actually really like Vigilantes. Vigilantes is a pretty solid series. The art isn't always on par. But in terms of the content, it's quite good. Yeah, I heard that. And I hear a lot of people saying that, like, that guy Knuckle Duster is a better teacher to, I forgot the main character's name, than All Might was to Deku. Yeah, All Might's pretty, well, that's another discussion. But, I mean, there's a lot to <laughs> say for his for his development as a teacher. But, yeah, I'm with you on that. He's probably the worst teacher at the school. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, at least I'm interested to see where the series goes for sure and you know i guess is there any do they have any plans now for the next season like i said i haven't followed the last two seasons i've been waiting for them all to pile up so i've seen snippets on youtube but i haven't actually really watched any of the newer seasons right so um the news the next season is going to well basically season five ended with them basically preparing for war everybody's in position um, the different teams are at their locations, so season six is going to hit the ground running. If if anybody were to, oh, if okay. yeah, if people weren't weren't watching the show, season six is probably where to where to hit if you're a manga reader. Yeah, did it end with Deku saying like I'm truly blessed or something like that? I remember that was like an end of a panel. That's oh no, we're way past that. So essentially, how it worked is that there was a huge controversy even um with with the anime this season because they switched around the the ordering of how the arcs went so instead of going joint training to uh, my villain academia to endeavor they did joint training to endeavor to my villain academia which reduced a lot of time for my villain and was kind of a narrative slow point since my villain was such a speedier arc and Endeavor was a lot slower, it kind of messed up how things were, and a lot of people fell off of the series that way. Yeah, I don't... Because, yeah, I I did know that, though, that they switched the Endeavor arc with uh, the My Villain arc, but did they ever do that uh, before that in the series? I... Up until now, it's all been very faithful, with the exclusion of a single, maybe, um, filler episode at the beginning or end of the series... Here, there, they it's it's all been pretty faithful. So this was huge to most of the fan base and myself included. And was there even a reason why this was done? There's a lot of there's a lot of discussion about it. To be honest, I had to tap out of the discourse because it was getting really toxic. A lot of people are blaming people who aren't like it, the animators aren't responsible for the direction choice. You know what I mean? Like. So it was a lot of yeah, no, I get that. Yeah, it was a lot of messed up discourse. So I'm not too sure exactly what ended up being the reason, or if anybody knows, but it seems like one of those higher up calls. Yeah, I get that. It's kind of like there's a video game called Smash Bros. If you're familiar with, oh for sure. And yeah, the the guy who helps create it, Sakurai, he doesn't pick the characters. The characters are given to him, and then he has to decide if it's doable. Right. And then he goes along with it. So it's not his decision. Yes, the up higher ups 
who give them the you know the character. So yeah, I guess yeah, same here. Like they don't decide it; they just go with what's given and if, see if it's you know doable, which I guess it is for sure. I mean, a lot of people ended up saying that um, it had to do with the movie just to just to um, uh, have things coincide a little bit better. Because if I'm correct, uh, World Heroes Mission dropped in Japan around the time the Endeavor arc was either concluding or happening. So that could be a reason there. Man, if there's, if there's reasons why, like, the anime isn't as good as it could be or whatever because of these movies... Please stop making the movies. I'm begging you. I don't care about the movies. Yeah, I've no. only watched one of them. It it's hard. It's hard. It's a hard thing to deal with because the animation is amazing. But as you as you said, like a lot of people really don't care, especially um, if it's not going to connect with the story in a flush way. Um, so yeah, I mean, it is what it is. Unfortunately, it makes too much money to be a non to to not have another sequel. In my opinion. Yeah, I mean, I guess the movies really do make money, but it's like, what is it? When we were in the overhaul arc, I guess that's when the the movie before came out. Right. And people were mad that, I guess, Mirio's fight didn't get justice because it turned into like a slideshow. Exactly. But even like and those kind of... Dis- get, Sorry, go ahead. And, no, I was just going to say like, then they ended up at least doing... Everyone enjoyed Deku and overhaul, but they just thought, oh, wow. Mir- everyone's so hyped for Mirio, and then, he, you know, he gets his Google slideshow. Exactly what you're saying is basically a lot of the stuff, a lot of the discourse that was happening in season five. You're right on track. So, like, yeah. <laughs> I have nothing more to add where that's concerned. Yeah, a lot of times for me, though, I just, I really just take the manga more serious than anime for me. You know, it's kind of bonus. The manga, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> Season 5 for me definitely solidified the manga as the optimal or the ideal way to consume this series. I was on the fence before and I still enjoy the anime, but there's no comparison now. Yeah, I've always been more of like I love the manga more than anime and I'll take what I can kind of get. Because I mean, One Punch Man uh, very much uh, disappointed me when I had Metal Bat vs. Garou. In the manga, I was like, oh my god, I can't wait to see it's animated. And once it's animated, I was like, ah, that's it. I'm starting to get to the point where, like, if the art is that good, I can't imagine it being, I can't imagine the quality translating into into anime. And I've seen that happen so many times. I mean, sometimes I get surprised, but for the most part, some of these panels, like, I, I it's legitimate art. It should be hung up in a museum somewhere. 